Hey there, it's Scott again uh, with another episode two of Pro Parenting. Uh, just wanted to share with the parents from an experience of other parents, uh, just some things that have helped their kids engage with God um, over the last recent months slash years uh, that we've been in this interesting time. Uh, we've had a lot of extra time with our kids. So today I've got uh, Megan with us here. So I'd like to welcome you. Hello, Megan. How are you doing? I'm going great. How are you? Good, thanks. Good. Now, you are an excellent mother of four boys, um, ages, what's the range, age range there? Uh, nine, seven, five, and three. Good, good, two, yes. Two years, every two years had a boy. Nice one, that's, that's, that's <laughs> uh, don't tell me what the odds of that are, but you've done well. <laughs> All right, um, cool, cool. So yeah, I'd like to share with the, uh, with the parents of the church, um, just maybe a couple of uh, resources or tips or uh, things that um, you have found uh, recently that the boys have, well, it's helped them engage with God um, while you've been mm. home. Yeah, I'll, I'll separate my kids' stages a little bit because it. I'm in a phase of life where, you know, Josiah is almost 10, so he's facing some different challenges that the younger ones do. So the younger ones, they're still in that phase, which is actually a really beautiful phase where if you tell them that God is all-powerful, they honestly think that no matter how fast they are down the driveway, they just know that God is faster and they know that God could pick up a house and their concept of God is sort of the powerful God picture. They just know that he can do anything. He can, he's anywhere. So it's, it's really quite a beautiful, just accepting of that character. And I guess when they're younger, their image of God is sort of like the Superman, the superhero sort of picture. Um, and, and stories you tell, they, I mean, they, kids love stories. So I think we, we try and focus more on, you know, just introducing stories and things and, and things. But I guess as they get older, using experiences to bring in different ways of either building on their faith or the understanding of God or resilience. Um, I, I was reading a book last year in lockdown and, and it's a mum, an American Christian mum, and she was talking about the importance of adventuring. I think her book is called Adventuring Together and the importance of, you know, using experiences and adventures to connect with the kids. And one of the um, things she said was, any opportunity that lands on your lap use that as a means of teaching so don't wait until you know don't sit them down after dinner and say let's talk about how you can build resilience but you know if there's an opportunity where you know a kid in their class is being bullied or they're being bullied you know using conversations that come up naturally using them as a means of sort of teaching those things, but in a really practical way. So for for us and with Josiah, he's just getting a bit older and he's a beautiful, sensitive soul. Um, but some of the things that have worked for us in trying to help him, you know, to deal with worries, um, bring a few down, like just around his bed, we've, um, we've put up some Bible verses, things like just really short, practical, things that he can read that can help remind him of things that we've spoken about. And the main one he loves at the moment is um, pass your burdens onto Jesus because he cares for you. Um, and, and he's had concerns around, you know, being around people or friends that might do the wrong thing and not wanting to sort of hurt them by saying, no, that's wrong, but not wanting to participate and you know, worries about that sort of stuff and, you know, trying to explain that, you know, God God has greater purposes for relationships and situations and just to trust that God has placed you there for a reason and just to trust God in the process, you know. So um, no matter how hard things, something might be in the moment, that God knows the direction, you know, and he... He knows where it's heading, and even if it's a test of your own character, he will he will be with you every step of the way. That's and I, I guess that's the main thing. Yeah, with Josiah at night time, I, I just say, well, 
I try and talk through like the worries and then I go, well, we, all we can do is pray, you know, and just be thankful that God is with us and that he will help you in the hard times, but just that he will never forsake you. That's really good. Yeah, yeah. I like the, the fact that you brought out that um, so much of parenting is um, is not planned. It's sort of serendipitous and you sort of just got to jump on the opportunities to those um, teachable moments when they happen. Yeah. Um, and that sort of that includes a lot of just being aware um, and, and actually watching for them. And and, um, and that's not easy to do a lot of the time. Like mm. Everything is busy and pressing and, and that sort of thing. So, yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a really good thing to remember and be reminded of. But, just to be just to be watching out for those moments and, and take them right. yeah and i mean the two times that i find are the easiest for good chats is when particularly because i have boys and they're active is either in the car because they're sitting and they can't go anywhere and at bedtime yeah and and you would know scott, scott when when they don't want to go to sleep they will do anything to sort of put off going to sleep you know so they'll often talk about their day in ways that they didn't earlier and they're actually a lot more open to sort of chat when they can't go anywhere else but they're stuck in bed yeah so those are the two times I have most valued just connecting yeah sort of on that deeper level um and I suspect we'll have different challenges with Micah and Matthew's personalities where There'll probably be a different, <laughs> you know, let's look at the compassion side of side of things, whereas Josiah has such a beautiful sensitivity and, you know, I think it will be his greatest strength, but at the moment, you know, really it, it has potential of sort of burdening his mind. Um, I pray while I'm speaking with him that, yeah, as, as parents, I guess we know our children the best and as you journey with them, yeah, you, you work out exactly how to acknowledge the good element of what they're struggling with and then working out, you know, how do you actually help them to stretch, you know, in resilience or in like whatever characteristic that we sort of need them to be sort of challenged with to do it in a way yeah. that, that also teaches them to also like do that in dependence on God. That's really good. Well done. Hmm. So that's yeah, it's a good good point. Knowing knowing the child's personality as well, their strengths and weaknesses, mm. and and catering for that, and uh, and and building on that. That's that's really good. Mm. Hmm. Well, that's really good. Thanks so much, Megan. That's um, that's some really good things um, to be reminded about. Um, like when we were working with our kids, um, those serendipitous moments, and and knowing like their, their personalities and, uh, and, mm. and yeah, and uh, tailoring the, um, the opportunities to, to talk to them with how they respond and what they're responding to. Mm -hmm. So, hmm, excellent. All right. Well, I hope that's, um, that's useful to, um, some parents and, uh, if they're, you know, if you're dealing with some things in a similar way that I hope that that uh, rings true. Um, but otherwise, um, yeah, that's a, that's a great reminder for us. And, um, I'll certainly try to put that into practice in my life too. So thank you very much, Megan. Pleasure. It's been great chatting. Excellent. All right. Thank you very much. We'll catch up with you later on. See you.